The emotional impact of stress is this, that it gives you moodiness. Now, you will say, who is not moody? Especially for women, they are blamed for being too moody. Even if she's not having a PMS, if she's not, you know, talking nicely or she's a bit irritated, even the staffers sometimes say, are you having a PMS? Otherwise, why should you behave like that? The premenstrual syndrome. The truth is this, if you have stress, you will be moody, you will be irritable, you will have short temper. See, we are trying to analyze everything. And now I am into the emotional symptoms and having an irritated behavior is a sign and symptom of there is too much stress over here. Sense of loneliness. Family is there and yet you are feeling lonely. And now, because it is so odd that you wouldn't like to share it with anybody, because people would say, Tera dhama kharab ho ke. You know, you get labeled that you are crazy. So people just hide it within. They are lonely, but they'll hide it in. And this loneliness further aggravates the, the stress. And feeling of isolation. I'm alone. Everybody's there, yet the feeling is, I am alone. And this is something I am so surprised. Canada, America, two countries I have traveled far and wide, met hundreds of people. And in their privacy, you know, they have a very happy family. But the moment they get a chance to be alone with me, they say, oh, I don't know why I feel like crying. And I know what the problem is feel isolated, they feel so isolated and lonely, they spend in the time again and again in the bathroom to, to cry so that nobody else sees the mom is crying. No, no child wants to see his mom crying. It's too difficult to explain to a child. Too difficult to explain to any friend or relative if you are crying and say, why are you crying? And you say, I don't know why. The dhamak kharab, you know, right away they'll say, are you crazy? Why are you crying? What's the reason? If in continuity this goes on, then it affects your cognitive behavior. That is, you will be having very low concentration. Very, very low concentration, very, very poor memory. And that is why people tend to forget their keys, People tend to forget, you know, what they were supposed to do. And sometimes they rush to do something. And by the time, say, they were in the bedroom, they go to the kitchen. By the time they reach the kitchen, they've forgotten, Oh, my Karan ki aya si. Why was I here? Then they'll go back again. And then they'll ask, will you tell me, why did I go to kitchen? They say, well, you went to bring some water for me. Again, are you crazy? See, it's, it's a very common thing which begins to happen. You go to a store to do your grocery, you buy everything, but not that thing which you were supposed to buy. And then you wonder what's gone wrong, then you write it on a slip. Smart people do that. Initially, it used to be a paper and pen thing. Now it is your, you know, the mobile phone. And so you keep things, a list, what, what I need to buy and from where. So you make a route and you do everything. And then you go in your car, you do the first thing, you're supposed to do two, three things more, but then you forget that note which you made. And then you come back home. I say, did you do the job? Oh, yes. What did, did you do? Did you bring milk? Oh. I was wondering, what am I forgetting? I was wondering, what did I miss? And I walked past the, the milk booth so many times and I would even look, oh, this, 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 this kind of milk is there. But still it didn't strike me that I, I was supposed to pick up the milk. But I did pick up the butter. She said, will I make cha with the butter? I need milk to make tea. Go on the back now. So you go for the second time. So memory loss and low concentration. Reason is stress. Just simple Stress. 
Now there is no meter or a gadget or a medical equipment which can gauge how much stress you have. It isn't there. So only you feel it. But sometimes the stress takes a toll onto your blood pressure. And many times people say to me, Baki sab theek hai, bas BP pata nahi kyun bade gaye. Baki sab theek hai. Well, if everything is fine, then your BP should have been fine. Uh, this year, with Indian Council of Medical Research, we did a clinical trial on one of uh, a yogic method called Yoga Nidra, which I have been teaching from last eight years. And the results were so good and great, and, but they were all subjective. And there was no scientific study done on Yoga Nidra. So uh, we approached the institute, the Indian Council of Medical Research, and finally they agreed. And in Hyderabad, seven scientists panel was made and they chose 75 subjects from general uh, masses and their uh, parameters were checked and the BP was taken, even the glucose insulin levels were taken, CRP was taken, homocysteine levels was taken. So they added many more things to it. My concern was just about the high blood pressure but they said, let's add on to these. So blood work is going to be done. So let's do what more we can do. So glucose, insulin, and uh, the stress hormone, cortisol. See, isn't it strange? When you are in stress, your body is like a chemical factory. It gets to order, make what? Cortisol. And the cortisol comes in the blood. And this cortisol makes you more worrisome. And if, if you have a higher amount of cortisol running in your bloodstream, you are now more probabilities of blockages is going to be there, of cardiomyopathy is going to be there, of palpitations is going to be there, panic attacks are going to happen, anxieties are going to happen, just because you have more cortisol. Reason is your stress. So they took the the cortisol levels were also taken. And then it uh, went on that people would come and every time their blood pressure is taken, they will do yoga nidra, they'll go back, they'll come again, again they will do repeat, repeat, repeat. And then every week the blood pressure was being monitored and every month, at the month end, after four weeks, uh, they would get the blood work done. And what they found was the beauty of just doing yoga nidra was this, that their blood pressures came down from 143 by 118 to 72 by 120. So 143. So systolic and diastolic, both blood pressures came down. No medication. We had two, two groups. One who were the control group, one was the experimental group. One who were taking the meds, one who are not taking the meds. So they are just doing the yoga nidra. Now what was yoga nidra doing? Yoga nidra is a process where you follow the instructions. You do it while lying down in a, you know, in a, when you want to sleep, you just lie down. So with no external sounds, meaning obviously mobile phone is off and you ask somebody if there is around and not to make a noise, we create a good environment, which is good for sleep. But uh, we are not going to sleep. We are going to remain conscious, but in sleep. And it's a very contradictory statement what I'm saying. Either you are conscious or you are asleep. If you are asleep, you lose the body consciousness. And if you have the body consciousness, then there is no sleep, right? Right? But yoga nidra takes you to a state where you are in the sleep mode, but you are totally conscious. First step, you go into deep inhalations and exhalations. Step two, you go into the attentively 
we rotate our attention, our awareness into the body from toe to head, from limb to limb, left and right, chest, back and every part, whichever you can feel. Now, these instructions are coming because you are lying down. I don't want your, the frontal brain to do any thinking. Hence, the suggestions are coming that take your attention now to your right thumb. You can do it even now, see? Just now, with your eyes open, we don't even need to close your eyes. Just wherever your right hand is, make your attention go to your right thumb. You don't need to move it, just feel it. Right hand index finger. Right hand middle finger. Right hand third finger. Right hand pinky. Your wrist. Your elbow. Take your attention to your head. Take your attention to your chest. Take your attention to your stomach. Take your attention to your shoulders. Are you getting it? The only thing is when you will do with your closed eyes, the focus would be more sharper and the feeling will be more stronger. And then the attention is taken to the breathing and the reverse count is done. And then comes the part, this is the, the zone where usually people will doze off because it, they are going to be so relaxed, so relaxed that sleep will take over. But in the beginning we did one thing and that is taking a resolve, a sankalpa, I will not sleep, I will not sleep. And then my voice is there guiding you, guiding you, anchoring you on to the waking state and you don't go into the dream state or the sleep state. The voice is anchoring and you are listening and listening and listening. And then the final stages of the visualization, which is a fantastic um, experience which one can have. Now, this yoga nidra procedure is not which I have invented, but this is a practice which was there in our yoga scriptures, which was there in our Upanishads. And it was just well compiled and we created a system. I made an audio CD out of that, it's digitally also available. Just for one reason that not everybody can come to me to get their mind sorted. Strange, you are living with the mind, mind is not sorted, mind is in a stress, yet you are not seeking a help to sort your own mind. Isn't it odd? People are unhappy, people are lonely, people are sad, they are crying, they are crying in their bathrooms, they can't even sleep. And they are having high blood pressures and not understanding this, that this high blood pressure puts them into a risk zone of having a brain stroke or having a heart stroke or having a kidney stroke. If you are in the stress and if you are, your diastolic and systolic blood pressure keeps rising, the chance of having a stroke is right there. And when I see people, when I meet people that who after the stroke are now paralyzed, they can't talk, they can go to bathroom, bedridden, nurse is taking care, children busy, wife gets angry, how long will she take care? And then he or she is crying in their bed. And I really feel like saying, why didn't you do yoga nidra? Why couldn't you take control of your own mind? Why couldn't you be stress-free? Why? That's a very big why. Unfortunately, the medical fraternity tries to bring down your blood pressure with the medication. But if I have any um, pharmacist sitting over here or a doctor sitting over here, they know it that the side effects of taking these blood pressure medicines are too many. 
And that's why they need to increase the dosage. They'll say, cut down your salt. They'll say, cut down this and that. They'll say, go for a walk. Uh, why I chose the ICMR to do this? Because that was my objective, that let all the doctors who really wish health for their patients, recommend and prescribe their patients to do yoga nidra. If you do yoga nidra every day, for surely, it's not now, now my word, it's a science word. It's the word of the Indian Council of Medical Research Scientists. Two of the scientists came to Delhi to submit me the preliminary report. And they were saying that we, them, we ourselves were very suspicious and very doubtful. How can just 40 minutes of lying down and following some instructions can improve upon the blood pressure? So, but, but we were shocked when we found that not only the BP came down, but also their cortisol levels came down. And also their insulin levels came down. And also the inflammation levels came down, the CRP. Also the homocysteine levels came down. So we are sheer, sheerly shocked, that's what I can say. And on behalf of our council, we really wish to say a thank you for giving us this, this beautiful method. It's, it's not just a mumbo jumbo said by some illiterate yogi. It is something which now the science is agreeing to and science is ready to endorse it. As I speak, my people are working to submit this report to the health minister, to all the senior concerned people and all to the senior who are running the medical institutes. And then, you know, I, I say, please go ahead, you can do your own research in your own way, but just do the yoga nidra and let's see, let's see what the result would be. Mind can be your enemy, mind can be your friend. When mind is stressed out, you have created an enemy in you.